guys welcome back for another podcast i'm joined with the crew today i got kellen and zach from dream media thanks for hanging out with us today you know we'll answer some questions during the stream here but i think we want to touch on a couple of things especially a couple of well one thing that i i'm very interested in myself zach you went over to the macintosh house of sound last week i believe and i went if you guys missed the video, it's on uh, it's on the channel. Just search for Macintosh House of Sound. I did a video tour for them three years ago, and I'll tell you what, it's probably the best house Macintosh House of Sound tour you're gonna see. Uh, but go check out that video. One of my best, actually, the best video I think I've ever shot. It's on the channel. Search for it. But he went to the new iteration of it, which is like in Chelsea, I think it is. I went, I forgot where it was in Greenwich, I think before, but now it's like in Chelsea, I think. Um, but you went last week, dude. What was it like? What did you see there? How fancy is it? How snooty is it? Well, give us the whole deets. Do you have any? If you have pictures, share some pictures. Yeah, definitely. Um, appreciate you having us on today, Shane. Uh, definitely was greeted with open arms at the new House of Sound, uh, which did feature a lot of Macintosh and Sonos Faber, Rotel, Michi gear. So. Uh, we were just having a heyday. I mean, I was in heaven. Uh, spent two days there just listening to quality audio. Uh, we checked out a new, uh, something that's under their umbrella, one of their partners, uh, Lucia, or Leica, Leica, sorry. Yeah, Leica also showed up there projectors. Um, but, I mean, Macintosh is just such a legendary iconic brand um i wanted to we've been meaning to bring it on for a while but just haven't really had the time honestly so now we're giving the brand the time that it deserves and onboarding it properly and this is going to be available for our dream media plus customers um, you can actually meet us out there at the house of sound for um visits to where you can audition the speakers and all the different setups yourself i really like the fact that they had like you know, different levels of setups as well. It, it, it's a very, it, it gives you a good sense of what it would actually be like to live with the audio versus a lot of showrooms. You don't really get to experience a real life situation, right? So what I mean by that is they had their ballroom, which is just like your typical living room that you would have. And they had a nice two channel setup in there with a crazy hi-fi two channel setup and just, mm -hmm outrageous mono blocks everywhere top of the line you know the best of the best of what mac has to offer but then they had all the way down to just like their rooftop they had their uh sonos faber weatherproof speakers just six of them mounted um to the exterior of the property and then they had a, another room that was called their uh jazz room and it had the Sonos Faber Olympicas and it had uh, Rotel and Michi here. And then the room right next to it was another just small little bedroom. Um, they called it the disco room and it had higher end Sonos Faber speakers in there. And then they had Mac gear, but they had the integrated, the 12,000, and then they had separates. And I thought that was really valuable because the, customer that's maybe on the fence like we get asked all the time kellen i'm sure you could you know mm -hmm. jump in here uh to talk about this a little bit more but i really liked um you know customers ask all the time like do i need separates like is an avr sufficient you could actually come in there and toggle between the two to actually hear for yourself the difference in quality between running a all-in-one integrated avr versus separates um just a wide variety of basically every single different price point of what Sonos Faber, Macintosh, Rotel Michi have to offer. Yeah, here's yeah. some pictures right here. And we're gonna be putting out a plethora of content on these exact rooms um, and giving you guys demos and walkthroughs of each individual space. But yeah, um, yeah th these pictures right here show exactly uh, where we were and um, we just had a, a whole lot of fun. Uh, and then their theater room was featuring their new arena series speakers from Sonos Faber and of course all Mac uh, processing. Yeah, that room right there. And I was blown away 
by the bass response in that room. They didn't have any specialty acoustic treatments done. They just redid the audio and video off of the existing room that had already existed when they bought the townhouse. Yeah. And they put in 16 subwoofers. So it's a 7.16 or maybe 9. Sorry, 9.16.4. And um, these little arena subs, you see them all across the bottom of the screen there. They have them tied to each side channel, each Atmos channel, each front channel. So it was giving a very tight, responsive, um, clean ba base throughout the entire space. And what's really interesting is they're just using little six inch woofers in there, um, which mm. typically, you know, we're seeing now like all the rage is these big, big giant subwoofers. Well, their new arena subs, I was pretty surprised. I mean, they were hitting really low, but they're not big subs, but they're very yeah. responsive. It sounded but Technically, amazing. those are in wall capable, right? Yeah, they're supposed to be in wall, but they have them just sitting on the floor in this setup here. They haven't, they didn't redo the room, which, you know, has its pros and cons. Um, you know, they're having to adjust for not really an optimal space with room acoustics, but yeah. um, it was good proof that you can put in a killer system into really any space. I'm wondering if because they're using that um, room perfect with their their processor, which is supposed to not rely on exactly you know their other room acoustics you know treatments rather so it kind of like yeah i mean i re the whole house was like this it, and it's great because most customers are really turned off by putting gear into their home because yeah. they're like you know the acoustics are terrible like they had um uh, well, i'm not super familiar with every single model yet of macintosh and sonos bobber but they had a really nice setup upstairs um on the third floor and literally had the worst acoustic environment that you could possibly imagine and honestly one of the most common ones that we have to deal with here at dream media which is just a whole wall of glass like it's an acoustic nightmare right but they were able to make it sound really nice and every single room in the house was like that no it wasn't decked out in acoustics but each room sounded really nice Right, so they're trying to give you like a real world living space experience rather than just like the ultra high end, um, you know, dedicated rooms. Well, I from mean, what that's it seems really like. the problem with high end a lot of the time is we're not able to put in, you know, these, we're not able to build a music room like, yeah. you know, you would the like. Kellens. You know, how, how do we overcome or find a balance between achieving high quality audio and also making sure that the system meets the aesthetic that the designers are going for and that the yeah. homeowner likes. Yeah, because most of these play, the, most of these rooms look like real living spaces. Exactly. Yeah. And I think every time you think about Macintosh or you see They're somebody with a Macintosh setup, it's like in a living room or a den or something like that covered by books or you know um they're never really in like dedicated rooms they're always look they're like they're like in just your normal living room space i guess every, well, I every, every time i see one different with this brand versus some of our other brands you know drain media we started as a custom integration brand like hide it all put it all away in a rack shut the door we don't want to see any equipment with Macintosh, it's so iconic. I mean, you want to buy it as like the centerpiece to the room, you know, to show it off. So I think that's another reason it this house really works well for the brand yeah. image. I mean, I think, uh, listen, that's why I bought my Mac amps. 50% was like, I just need those blue meters. Exactly. I have never heard them, but I need to buy them anyways. <laughs> Uh, but that's awesome. So when is this going to be available to, uh, you know, Dream Media customers? So we'll be getting set up in the next week or two and the content nice. will start rolling out in um, probably about a month or so. We're doing a soft launch. This isn't going to be for everybody, obviously. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's pricey stuff. So if customers are interested in purchasing Mac, um, this is going to be 
Dream Media Plus white glove service, um, which means that we are required to and want to deliver the product to your home and set it up for you to ensure that it meets our Dream Media Plus quality standards and that you're, at the end of the day, super happy with your purchase. Plus, I do not think Macintosh lets anybody ship Macintosh products. Am I correct on that one? Correct. Right. Yeah. So, guys, you're going you're gonna to order Macintosh. And if you are just ordering it online, you might want to make sure that it's from an authorized reseller. And that's one yeah. thing we pride ourselves on here at Dream Media is being authorized to sell every single brand that we carry, which means that you're going to get a full manufacturer warranty. <laughs> The reason I say that is because if you're buying it online and it shows up to your door, it's probably sold sideways somehow and you're not going to have it. <laughs> you don't want to order a Macintosh online and end up with a tone winner, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a really nice space, though, like, you know, for us to bring customers, essentially. We'll be able to pick people up at the airport and give them a, a very luxurious tour of this, this high-end space. Did, the, did they let you listen to the Jeep Wagoneer? They wanted to, but we didn't have did time. It? I made it out of the city in the nick of time, man. Um, I got out Thursday, and then like I got texts and stuff from everybody that the whole city was flooding Friday morning. So, um, oh. oh, that was the next day. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I barely yeah. made it out. I mean, it was uh, – I got very, very lucky. But I, I did want to <laughs> check out the, the Jeep, but there were so many other goodies in the home. We just didn't get to it. This is the room that I was telling you is really cool because um, this is a very common situation. Wall yeah. of windows. What do you yeah. do with the acoustics in a space like that? Yeah, but that's I, cool do think, um, I do think if you are scheduling an appointment with them, they're going to be picking you up from the airport in that wagon here. Yeah. I yeah. think that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's like a. That's pretty cool. That but you've, much, uh, you've you've had a chance to experience it, haven't you, Shane? You've listened to it. Yes, I have listened to it, guys. If you missed the review on the channel, they let me borrow the Jeep Wagoneer for a couple of days to do a review, and uh, I did enjoy it. Surprisingly, for such a big vehicle, it drives like a small vehicle. Uh, the only issue that well, I didn't really have an issue with it. You would think having twenty three speakers or whatever inside of a Jeep Wagoneer, which is pretty big. It's actually very big. Uh, I felt like it should have been louder. But maybe I'm just one of those guys that just want to blast music. But if you're just somebody that just really just wants to relax listening to like cello music or something like that. Concerts from Yo-Yo Ma. Then it sounds awesome in that vehicle. But if you want to play some Jay-Z or something like that. Maybe not the best choice. Uh, but yeah, what a great sounding vehicle though. Check out the video. One of my best videos I want to say every time I've shot a Macintosh video, maybe maybe something in me says put a little bit more effort into it. That's <laughs> yeah, definitely one of my better videos too. <laughs> so, so check out that video. Great video. I mean, I only got like thirteen thousand views. I should have gotten more because it's a, the best Jeep Wagoneer video on YouTube, bar none. The rest of the stuff is from like regular car reviewers. They don't really know about audio, but check out that video. I'm very proud of it great video also check out the tour video uh, You're awesome. but, you make some great content listen i wanted to go you gave me real short notice on coming to meet you out there um because i wanted to go out, the, out there and shoot a couple few videos with you out there but you were just like two days before shane coming uh <laughs> come come out here i was like dude i had to get my cameraman ready and all that stuff well i didn't even know if we were going to go you know we're we're a a online retailer dealer custom integrator and this was supposed to be a press event so yeah. we were invited as press and i didn't think we were going to see this until you know months from now i didn't plan on releasing our relationship and rolling out the content with macintosh until end of the year early next year honestly but uh, we just decided to go ahead and get it going don't they don't you have to go to um what is it, wherever there? What is it, Buffalo? Not Buffalo. You have to go to New York, right? To to their facility. New Jersey. Is New yeah, Jersey? I believe so. Um, but yeah, Kellen as well as myself will be attending 
special trainings and all the yeah. fun stuff like that. So we'll have a, a whole bunch of great Macintosh videos and educational things coming out on our channel like we've done for other manufacturers as we start to roll out um, all of that. Oh, sweet. Dude, if you go to New Jersey, let me know if you're going to New Jersey. I will go. You're, that's only like an hour from me. Well, um, you know, if I'm allowed to, I don't know. If it's I'm like waiting to stuff. hear back right now from the guys at Perlison, but we're supposed to be shooting some content with them in New Jersey hmm. um, here this month. So I thought it was Philly. You know. Is it Philly or New Jersey? New Jersey for Perlison, for sure. Okay. I can't remember where he said we need to do the Macintosh training, but um, yeah, it's on the list. <laughs> Dude, I feel like Macintosh is in New Jersey. I feel like it's someplace else with a, with a B. <laughs> I can't think of it. Um, it'll come to me. But I think it's like six hours for me. Um, yeah, I'm excited for you guys to carry that stuff. I mean, I have a couple of their amplifiers in my theater that I've been collecting dust for a couple of years. I actually put them up for sale, but I, I only like partially review them. I mean, if you guys are going to carry them, maybe I'll do the full review because I've been they've been there for like three years and they're great sound and amplifiers for sure. So I could definitely maybe do like a full review. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome amplifiers. You, they really need to be paired up with the correct speaker. I feel like because with the with the Trinov and everything like that, they're not perfectly mated. Like I think Trinov made their amplifiers to be mated with that processor, so you get the actual best sound. Um, so you know when people talk about like synergy with amplifiers and processors and stuff like that, then I believe that's I believe that to be true. Um, I don't feel like the Macintosh was the best choice for the Trinov, but at that time I didn't have a Trinov. I had the Macintosh first, then the, then I got the Trinov. But the Max made it well with like uh, Marantz and Denon and NAD and stuff like that. So um, I guess I guess uh, if you guys hook up with uh, their MP170 or something like that processor, then it'll probably mate really well with the amps that I have right now. I would assume so. I mean, if they're gonna sell them to you then let me know i definitely want to check that yeah out. yeah we'll have to we'll have to have a conversation with them about getting some product in your hands for review mm -hmm. but yeah, um you know really we are already set up currently um as a sonos faber dealer rotel and michi yep and which is all part of the fine sounds group and i'll have to say the sonos faber sounded amazing um yeah they're making gear yeah, like all handmade cabinetry and all that stuff. Super, super fancy. And they're little fancy string grills that are supposed to be like violins or something like that. Like cellos. You've, uh, you've had some Michi stuff in your hands, haven't you? Yeah, so I reviewed the uh, the, P, the S5, P5. Zach sent over, again, the uh, the P5, the, um, the preamp, which i've been using as the reference preamplifier so i got rid of the uh cambridge actually i didn't get rid of it yet. i still have it in a box so anybody wants to buy the cambridge preamp nq shoot me an email but that's replaced it i've replaced it with a michi which i think is a slightly more detailed sounding preamp for sure um and i paired that up with the nad so i do have that right now you guys probably want to buy that you can probably buy that for me right zach if you want to buy the p5 um but yeah, they they yeah. drew me as carrying on Michi, which is I'm gonna say, you know, of, of all the stereo stuff that I've reviewed on the channel, the Michi stuff is definitely maybe right up at the top there, maybe the top three or so. I'm trying to think of something that that would have been better than that. Um, I don't know. I think that's it, man. Like that's like the coolest stuff. I, mean, I, I reviewed so many, I can't remember. Um, their but, Michi uh, Sonos Faber Olympica set up there, yeah. and that jazz room just was mind-blowing and they played not only jazz but some hip-hop and a variety of different songs for me and i thought that was probably one of the best value systems in the mm. whole house um it sounded really good i think it was appropriately matched to the size room as well but um you guys will see on that video um it was really impressive uh, even the guys that worked there at the house of sound were raving over it Right, right, right. And uh, so those, so those speaker, those subs in the theater, you said they were like six inches. Yeah, let's pull up the details on it. Um, 
I, I can't remember specifically, but he was saying something about it's got a bunch of six inch drivers. Um, maybe you can go to their website and pull up the spec sheet on it. Again, we're not fully trained on all the models yet, but um, they only make one variant. And when he was explaining it to me, I did think it was kind of unique. Oh, that's Revel. Custom install. Especially for such a high-end brand to go with such small drivers. Um, and it's it just sounded amazing. I was like, wow. You know, you <laughs> would have thought that they had, you know, crazy 30, 50 inch subs in there. Um, but the dispersion and the accuracy, um, them having each set of subs, they had like two subs tied to each surround channel and height channel. And it was just very immersive. Oh, so much power. What the hell's a millimeter? Let's see, product sheet. I reviewed their, their Gravis subs in the past. Um, they take a lot of time in like the, the enclosure. It was like wrapped in leather, like hand stained wood and all that stuff like that. So very musical subwoofer. I'm assuming this, this subwoofer is probably, probably kind of, kind of the same. 10.8 inches. Maybe they're 10 inch subwoofers. I'm seeing four, six and a half. It's yeah. the uh, arena S 15. Oh, arena S15. Let's see. Arena S15 sub. That's 215. Here we go. Custom installation, the arena. Introducing sci-fi. Sci -fi. Yeah, I actually... Um was blown away huh. by that little actually everybody at cedia was kind of getting either pissed or intrigued at cedia when they had their little booth going right kellen yeah i mean those things hit yeah they were playing that skrillex they would play uh greatest showman and then they played that skrillex song and it was just i'm sure annoying to everyone around that Get oh, there you go. Array balanced subwoofer. Huh. It doesn't yeah, look like so it goes low. Four six and a half inch woofers in it. Really? It, yeah, okay. There it is. Four six and a half inch. A little yeah, tiny. Looks like, it, looks, like it rolls off, looks like it rolls off pretty hard at 35 hertz. But hmm. I'm sure with like room gain and having 16 of them, they probably yeah. get pretty deep. <laughs> Yeah. These look pretty cool too. What are these? These loudspeakers, four, six and a half inches. Like a yeah, surround speaker, were... maybe. And the, actually, these were the surrounds. I think that was in the picture. Mm -hmm. Yep, and fronts. Is it? Uh, do you have your camera set up for 4K or is it 1080p, Zach? Right now. Yeah. 4K, which is probably why I'm lagging so bad. Yeah, probably. You should always drop it down to 1080p. How much does a space like that generally run? I'm retiring soon and starting to gather info on this stuff. Um, I mean, these are, uh, these ain't, so does Fiber ain't cheap. I mean, these yeah. ones are cheap speakers. Ma I mean, in the Macintosh. Just the Mac stuff, yeah. Uh, the that Mac it, several hundred thousands of dollars. I I would uh, I would almost have money on it. Oh, yeah. oh the uh, the theater there. It's a half a million dollar setup. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I mean, we heard million dollar setups at Cedia, so you know, for it being Macintosh branded with these Sonos Faber, I mean, it's not that crazy. I mean, listen, if you're um, shopping in this category, then you know what it costs. Yeah. You know what I want to check out, Zach, is um, one of those uh, hybrid tube amps. Was it 275? Uh, the MA-1200, right? man. That's what I've got my eyes Oh, on. yeah. That's the what one you... Kellen wants. 
Which one? The MA twelve thousand or no MA twelve hundred? Sorry, twelve hundred. Oh, that gigantic one, the monoblock. No, it's not a monoblock. It's a it's a integrated or it's a uh, hybrid. Um, Blue up. I was thinking about this yeah, one. That thing sounded good, Kellen. That's the room where they can hear side by side the jazz room. They can hear side by side that integrated, and then switch over to the separates. So if you have a customer that's on the fence, definitely send them over there. It's like the perfect situation. What is it? To See, I got this one. I have the 255. Yeah, keep going. Uh, and then 257. Go to, go to products and then go to hybrid. It's the first, first one that pops up. Products. Hybrid drive. Hybrid drive. <laughs> oh, the silver. Is it silver? Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. No, no, no. <laughs> one more. One more. MA twelve. Oh, okay. 12, yeah. There you go. Yeah. You can't integrate it. Yeah, that just looks fancy, dude. <laughs> I was like, you see, you just want to like, listen to it. <laughs> it's almost yeah, like you don't, you don't, don't even care what it sounds like. You're just like, okay, just I just want one. <laughs> just want to look at. It. I just picture you yeah. like talking at your microphone really close and low tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got these uh, incandescent blue, oh, yeah. <laughs> the blue lights. And look at this. It looks like a uh, secret of ooze green vacuum tubes here. Yeah. Oh, Smooth and delicious sounding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You it's know like how much. I, I, I don't even know how much it weighs, but I'm pretty sure it weighs at least 100 pounds. At least. Let's, let's, go, to, yeah. let's go to the specs. I had to get, when I was putting in the 255, 257 in my rack, I had to call my friend over to help me put it on the first two bottom two bottom rows on the, on the audio rack because it was just too heavy for myself. Um, what's the weight on this? Man, yeah, I want to hear this too. Got shipping. 140 pounds. Oh, well, hold on. Actual weight, 108. Shipping's 141. Still. Yeah. Sooner than later. Yeah. Well, after you, uh, Kellen. Yeah, I definitely want to check that out. I'll have I to think... drive it to you. I'm not shipping that sucker. <laughs> yeah, you got to ship You're it freight. I'm not trusting anybody. Uh, WKR Piper of Cincinnati. Hell, that's right close to me. Uh, WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah, it's a couple hours from me. I'm working on redesigning my theater, JTR speakers, not 20, oh, 24 inch, or. You, you know, you know, Kellen, you got the beautiful looking audio room there. Looks fan. You got your audio, your video quali quality looks fantastic, but your microphone quality, so cr it's such crap. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> That uh, there you go there you go this is what happens guys when you put the microphone behind you no the volume was down on my mic sorry that's what it was sorry now you could talk sexy to him too Cal. <laughs> <laughs> talk about those rba speakers behind you real nice and slow <laughs> they're good i like them bro look at this lighting fixture where'd you get that where'd you get those lighting fixtures from Lighting fixtures. That's not lighting fixtures? Oh, he's talking about the snow sound acoustic treatments. Oh, oh yeah. Those are, okay. Yeah. Is that what that is? Yep. Are there lights attached to it? No, there's no lights on them. There probably should be. What, what, you're, what you're seeing, is, it's probably hard to tell the depth of the room, but he's got a backlit panel that he put into oh. a window. So there used to be a window right there. And he put this this nice little designer. Oh my! Yeah, fancy. Yeah, okay. there you go. I yeah. Can see it. And then we got a Salamander Designs cabinet coming to go below it, um, and it's got like a white finish, really beautiful. Is this um, your is this your music room or what? What is this? Just your living room? It's technically my office. It's <laughs> so I've got stuff everywhere, but. 
<laughs> this is uh, for select customers uh, to come and listen to two channel listening um, to make a educated buying decision. We found that with the two channel market, it's really hard for people to feel comfortable in spending, say, $30,000 um, unless they hear it for themselves. So uh, yeah. by appointment only, Kellen is allowing people to, to come and listen to this setup. You can see he's got the Hi-Fi Rose back there, too. So we're starting to cater a little bit more to the two channel market in addition to the home theater market. Yeah. So this room is going to be a, a statement piece for nice. a bunch of the dream media plus two channel gear to live in and for customers to uh, come and listen. Fancy room. What are those uh, little to get a, another couple of pairs of speakers, maybe some like nice monitors or bookshelves another set of towers. Uh, I'd like to get the Macintosh. Uh, next item is probably going to be the uh, Michelle turntable. Um, that's something I've got my eyes on. And finish the de the decor on the walls are going to be. I'm starting to get some vinyl. So there you go. Just just for you, Shane. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> This uh, guys this week Taylor Swift is having her concert. Uh, so yeah, I mean at the theater, kind of like a grid on the side walls mm. to kind of give it some, you know, some extra look. I like those uh, room, those treatments there. What do those go for? Um, I mean, they wouldn't fit in my space, but I like them though. The snow sounds, the botanicas is what they're called. Yeah. Uh, snow sound, botanica, because they look like a tree. Tree. Um, I have to look. I think yeah. they're somewhere in the ballpark of like 1200 each, something like that. Oh, really? That. Oh, yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah. Snow sound makes yeah. a bunch of really cool lifestyle acoustics because, yeah. like, we were talking about cool with the Macintosh movie. House of Sound, it's really hard to get any wife or designer to approve an acoustic panel on the wall <laughs> yeah yeah, so those are cool. yeah those we're are always cool. looking for unique solutions um that's why our line card is so extensive as we're a lot of the times we're like on the hunt for a very specific situation and then we'll get set up as a dealer for that one customer and and we have it in our back pocket but that's why people call us is for the consultation aspect is we've yeah. done thousands of these all over the country and so many different type of rooms that you can lean on us to kind of take some of the headache out of the process and we can just kind of plug in these very specific products to create a full solution they're they're like 2300 i just looked okay well, 2299 yeah i wish though i wish they would have added little led lights or something so you can click them on oh, hold on one second Got the, uh, oh, right. <laughs> I got my little floor line shining doing. up on my towers. But. Yeah. The RBH it's is. Along. It's going to yeah. get better and better. Um, I've, got, you know, I've got wires hanging out of the wall, moving everything around. So still, still very much under construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, so these guys are going to be, you know, Zach. You're going to be carrying uh, Macintosh soon, so I can't wait for that. Hopefully, you guys get me some stuff in here, too, because it's so finicky when they're lending out stuff. I think they only have, like, one guy to lend out stuff to, and you guys know who that is. <laughs> um, every time I do it, every time they send me new, hey, man, do you want to check out this new processor? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. 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 Two months later, hey, man, are you guys still sending me this or what? <laughs> <laughs> then it's always like they move on to something else i'm like dude I was like, why do you always hit me up all the time to check out your stuff but then it's like something else they're so finicky the macintosh guys wow. but they, they'll lend me their hundred thousand dollar car though I'm like, I'm like what the what the hell guys <laughs> yeah they're they're busy i mean uh even just when i was there at the house of sound i mean they have some some real uh high-end customers rolling through there yeah pretty regularly so um it, it's only by appointment only scheduled um yeah. but 
to answer Jason's question, who's in the chat about showrooms, um, Dream Media, although we've built, you know, in Kellen's home, that two channel room and the killer home theater featuring the Focal 1000 uh, Utopias and JVC 4100, he's got the, the full blown theater there as well. We have partners around the country. So like if you're on the East Coast, we may recommend a different showroom. If we're on, if you're more centrally located, maybe a different showroom. And it also depends on the brands that you're interested in. So just reach out and talk with us, but getting a demo and experiencing the products that you're interested in purchasing is never a problem. Um, Dream Media just hasn't done a commercial location because we feel that our business model is going to be more successful long term with the current approach that we have. But it's not to say it's not going to happen one day. You know, we may end up building a, a showroom. It's just we have so many products to offer and they're so specific. Like as an example, if you, we're going to be putting out some RBH content and uh, we did a full manufacturer tour, somebody who's interested in hearing RBH we don't really want to drag you to a customer's home or, you know, uh, bother any of our customers. So they have a showroom there in their world headquarters where you could uh, fly into Utah and hear the RBH theater. Um, or That's say it's not you can go to they have every single speaker that RBH makes. So it's like, it's just kind of cost inducive, but also just space. If you just don't have a huge warehouse, if you're interested in RBH, go to their facility, go to their factory. We'll show you around. You can literally listen to every single model that they produce. Um, it's a lot better to do it that way. If you already nailed it down to a single brand, um, that's, I mean, that's the way to do it. You can listen to their theater, their subs, their towers, their bookshelves, and a living room can, can, uh, configuration. Um, more of like an open like demo showroom space they have a dedicated theater so uh, there's you know every manufacturer pretty much has a space similar to that yeah so that's what we would do is meet you out at these various different manufacturer facilities um give you a demo and also just introduce you to the brand a little bit more um it's a lot better than whatever, even if we had a giant showroom, it's still going to be pretty limited in comparison to visiting the manufacturers directly. What is the, um, what's going on with the uh, Ava remote? Is there any updates with that? Uh, Ava remote. So one thing that we'll probably need to talk about will be the way that it's configured. So, um, I will likely have to set up the remote before we ship it out to the customer. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. They, they just want more of the tech and the setup on the dealer. Not they're they're just not set up in a way to support the end user directly. Oh, is this kind of like a Savant, the Savant handheld remote situation? Where it's no. Like you can no, it's just it's just more of they just don't have the tech support to, you know, if, if they're selling it directly to a customer and they're getting 300 calls a day on silly questions, they're just not set up. They're set up to support the dealer to set to support the customer. Um, that's that's really all it boils down to. But um, mm -hmm. and then other than that, it's still looking like either next week or the following week on when they'll be. Um, shipping so okay yeah because um mr john sandoval wanted me to ask you that so this is this isn't exactly like an end user friendly type of thing from what it seems, sounds like it it is they just want the dealer involved as much as possible hmm. to help support the customer which makes the product you know perform at its best they just okay. don't want you to ship it, abandon the customer, and say, figure it out. And yeah. customers calling Ava, like, hey, like, what do I do? How do I set this up? So, okay, so so if they purchase this remote from you, then you will, you will support them rather than Ava, which I'm sure will at some point. But you are their 
their first con point of contact for customer service. Yes, they would like for the customer to go to the dealer. If the dealer cannot figure it out, then the dealer would go to get the Ava involved to figure out, you know, how to make this work or set this up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, even if you're a tech savvy guy, they want the dealer involved as yeah. much as possible. Yeah, John's gonna he's gonna log off and, now. And guys, we... keep in mind we just haven't had hands-on experience. Yeah, you know, setting it up. So we'll make a full-blown installation setup video on it. Both me and Kellen have them coming to our personal homes. So yeah. we'll show you, and we'll just be frank with you about how at all the different various aspects. I mean, it might just be to where we got to do a basic setup and kind of tie the remote to our dealer account uh, for. Yeah warranty reasons and just because that's the way their dealer network is set up like Kellen was saying but then we can pass it off to you because that's kind of how the Harmony Pro 2400 was supposed to be um, it was for pros to set up but what we found was consumers could do it uh, as well so yeah. you had both options but when we did it all of the customers appeared under our pro account so we could like monitor their system, which could be really beneficial for people. So, and that's probably yeah. where Ava is going is they want us to handhold. So could you, when you get that, you know, in hand, so if somebody, if I were to call you like, Hey man, I just added a second Apple TV. Can you remotely just add that from where you are? Well, there shouldn't what's be really cool is, to do that. The, what's that? the end customer will be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. Or That's you could, so or cool you could do, or I can do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, so all right. So that's cool. Yeah. So it's either, or like, if you really are just like techn technologically like inept, you can be like, yo, Kellen, I just, can you just put this Apple TV in my son's bedroom? Just add well, it. Shane, what we saw in the demo, it's, you shouldn't even have to be tech savvy. Like it is stupid, easy from the yeah. demo. We re we received at CDS. So it what We'll do a full video that isn't like them selling us. We'll tell you our real thoughts coming soon, but it's uh, supposed to be really cool from what he demoed in person at CDA. We were like, wow, our customers are going to lose their minds over this. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, uh, yeah so I you just know. definitely want to have the dealer help the customer as much as possible. And we yeah. definitely will. Uh, they just don't, like I said, they're just structurally, or their infrastructure is not set up in a way to just be a call support center uh, yeah. for the remotes. Yeah. And I, I you know, uh, we put up that, that little video a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about this. And, um, you know, I put that it was like the Harmony replacement. Obviously, I did that for a various reason, for one particular reason, just to get you guys to click on it. Um, but this is more, more in line with. Um, it's like an upscale Harmony remote, but also kind of like. More, more closer to like a control for a Crestron thing, where it is more affordable and it can do stuff that the higher end stuff can do, which which is also more end user friendly. So while it's not like a four hundred dollar universal remote that works on an IR sensor, which let's face it, IR sucks on the Harmony remotes. I've had several of them; they all suck because they're never reliable. Whereas if this is just functioning really on uh, IP, then that's definitely closer to like a control for a Crestron type of thing, Savant type of thing, where it's definitely more reliable. So it's not missing commands; it's more uh, definitely more stable with its commands, sending out commands two-way communication correct yeah so if you want to know what your volume is set at if your trend over storm audio or denon is at a negative 32 it'll say negative 32 on the remote whereas up on the harmony the harmony doesn't know what it's at which i think is interesting i don't know if it's going to show artwork from like your kaleidoscape or maybe an apple tv yes. if it's going to show so it's yes, going to show so that as well what's what's also going to be cool is the current ava remotes will get the Ava OS unlocked onto it. So the only yeah. differences will be, this is full touch screen. There's no dynamic keypad or arrow pad down here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you go to, 
I don't have it on here now, but like even just like the Hi-Fi Rose app on the yeah. remote, like I can control the whole, it shows oh, the album artwork, yeah. you know, pick your song. What, what am I looking, wait, what are we looking at? What is that? Is that the remote? Yeah, that's this, is the, that's, this is the older one. Yeah. Oh, you got the, okay. Okay. So, so it does run the apps. Obviously, I think we talked about that last time. So it'll run the apps like a cell phone, basically on the remote so you get the mobile app on the phone so yeah did you but try what's nice is now they have the hub shane so analog or old school devices that still require ir you have a hub now to actually control them that was the problem yeah. that and the touch the the physical buttons because when it's dark you don't want to always have to look down at the screen right yeah so it's nice to have the physical buttons and now they have the hub so it really is a, a solid solution so i yeah i think uh people didn't understand that that the whole control pad is kind of it's got tactile feedback so it feels like buttons right yeah correct so I, i'm not sure if anybody how many people comprehended that because I, I know we got a it's few almost comments more like an apple tv kind of yeah. like, like a track pad right yep so to like vibrate you get a little bit of tactile feedback on that yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got the raised glass so you can tell like where your fingers are at on that circle if it's more on yeah. It's it's a nice remote. Did you try to put the turn off app on there? See what that looked like? Uh they don't have the turn off app for Android. Really? Not yet. Or they didn't wow. have it two weeks ago. I, I mean I guess I could try it right this second, but I don't yeah. think they have it. Yeah, I don't think about that. Yeah, I got sure. it on my iPad, so yeah, maybe you're, you're probably right. That makes sense. Okay. Can you, uh, is there like a web browser on that? Yeah. I mean, it's. Oh, is it? It's literally just like an Android. <laughs> I wonder if, can you bring up the. Do you have a trend over in your house? Could you bring up the web page for the trend over there? Oh, just like by the IP? Yeah. I'm sure it'll be awful experience. <laughs> I want to see if you can get the uh, the visualizer on there, the object yeah, viewer I'm on there. Up here. One yeah. second here, let me see. Yeah, that'd be kind of crazy if you could. For you Trinov guys, John. John hit me up with all these questions. All, yeah, ask Kellen this. Ask Kellen this. I was like, dude, I don't know. Uh, I'll ask him. He can message me. He messages me all the time. Or not all the time, but he knows how to get a hold of me. I think we're talking about it. We, you should, we should get them on the channel. They can answer some questions as well. Cause, um, yeah. Um, working on that, they're just balls to the wall right now, trying to get everything to roll out the remote. Yeah. Well, they roll out some more if they come on the channel. You just tell them that. Yeah. They might sell 20 of them. They come on the channel, maybe they can sell 100. So if it be... operates like we saw at the show, this is going to sell like hotcakes. People are going to lose their mind. All the Harmony yeah. guys will have to upgrade because it just seems stupid easy. <laughs> I know. I don't want to. Be, I know. I don't want to be a pest killer. I'll. I'll just bother Shane. <laughs> You're not a pest at all. I just don't uh, get alerts for Facebook Messenger, so that's the only. If you reach out through Facebook Messenger, that's the absolute worst way to try to get a hold of me. I will say that. Hold on. Can can you download Facebook on there as well? <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. I figured, I figured as much. For some reason the uh the it's not pulling up or for what it's it's just like stuck and loading. But my turn off okay. may be turned off. So Oh. All right. That's that's probably what it is. I yeah. got it turned off right now. All right. So I I think I think one thing that people don't understand um the two-way communication is like a big thing. Unless you've had it before, you don't know what you're missing because just to, just to know that your volume is set at a, a specific level, that's a big thing. Like I, I think that's a super big thing. Um, if I'm going through like the, my Cloud Escape menu and I can see the, the artwork and I'm like, I just scroll through it rather than just having to look at my screen. Sometimes it's easier just to look down. You can scroll through your titles and stuff like that. Or if I'm watching like Ahsoka or whatever, Obi-Wan, and I want to check out my timeline, how much time is left, I could just look at the remote. And right now I'm using the, the Rumi remote, which show, which 
I'm assuming probably does the same thing as Ava does, or Ava does the same thing as Rumi does, where you can see how many how much time is left on the content that you're watching, rather than tapping on pause and seeing what's seeing what's left on the screen. You can look down at the remote and it'll tell you. So I think that's super cool. That that two way communication is super cool. That the Harmony people are you Harmony people. You're not going to understand what that even means because Harmony just doesn't have two way control. Once you get that. It's it's like it's like a whole different thing. It's it's super cool. It's very useful. I'll just say that. It's just like super useful. It makes life easier as well. Something you don't think about if you've never had it before. So I think that should definitely be a talking point as well. No, you're exactly cool. right. I mean, I used the whenever I had the Ava in my in my theater, like that was the best way to yeah, enjoy Netflix or uh, uh Kaleidoscape was having the Classcape app open, you can literally just look at all your movies right there, pick the movie, and then it shows you how much time's left. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right. So, John, we got we got to your question. I think there was a super chat here as well. Let's answer that really. What the uh, was a question here? I saw your post, Shane, about the 100-inch Hisense U. 8k do we know a dimming zone count i saw 1600 online have you all tried to game on it i don't think it's in hands in the hands of anybody yet zach as far as i know no um, we just had to refund somebody that bought one because it's not being fulfilled yet so oh um, so it's it's, like... it's still brand brand new yeah we put it on our website prematurely and um somebody bought it but um it's not actually really? out God damn it. was that from me yeah, looking like from me? looking <laughs> like early next month but we actually have a call tomorrow to learn more on possibly dis distributing nationwide not just local to dallas get more information on the television um so that's going to be exciting because I know a lot of people are super interested about this TV. Yeah, especially for the price. I mean, hundred inches at five oh. grand. It's this insane. Is, yeah, I was saying this like three years ago. I was like, listen, two three years, we will have one hundred inch TVs under ten grand, five grand, three grand. It's now is that time, and it's happening. It's five grand right now. I'm gonna say another two years, you'll be able to buy these hundred inch TVs at Walmart for like two grand, less than two grand. So, I mean, the hundred inch size is becoming like the new 75 inch. It's gonna be the new 75 inch where everybody, everybody's gonna have one that's got space for it. So, I mean, the fact that we're getting it now for five Gs, I mean, that's impressive. I'm sure you guys seen it. What was the quality like at the show? Solid. I've got the, that's the 65 inch version of the TV right here in my office and um honestly compared to like my lg oled i think it looks just as good even the even the black levels are solid yeah i, yeah. I cannot tell that it's with the local dimming zones and, and mini led it's awesome yeah yeah john's definitely gonna get one he asks me all the time what about the 100 inch high century <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, just like, just buy it, man. 100 inch or five grand, that's a no brainer. It's hard Especially to beat. that size, yeah. Yeah, it, looked, no it looked good. I mean, I didn't spend a ton of time, like, like, watching it. They had a little demo reel at CDF, but it looked good. I mean, five grand, <laughs> you can't beat yeah. it. Yeah, I've got, I've got watches that are twice as much as that, and you probably use your TV more. That's a lie. Uh, what uh, what do you guys feel about, you know, the, the biggest news? I know Kellen forwarded me the email. Then I got the email from Raphael. Zipidi going out of business. Kind of, essentially. Maybe prematurely, but, you know, kind of calling it quits. I know you guys sell, used to sell the Nas, the Nas, right? Yeah. We were a Zipidi dealer. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, the NOS was gone for a while now. So yeah. it was really just the players. And then, but honestly, by the time you talk to the customers on, unless you felt comfortable or had the time, I mean, it just wasn't worth it, honestly. 
you buy a three four thousand dollar player but then you still have to figure out a way to rip your movies or download them illegally which we never recommend but you know then it's like okay then where do you put them so then you have to talk to them about getting a external storage drive so then yeah by the time that's at then that just led to cloud escape which led to you either have the cheddar or you don't so yeah 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 i think it basically comes down to like i think if they did not sell that nas ripper we wouldn't be having the conversation right now because oh, I think, a thousand percent they yeah. literally dug their own grave with that yeah piece of equipment so <laughs> they probably shouldn't have sent it to me after me they <laughs> sent it to a few other people and it was just like was that's it you're on the radar no dad that's kind of how i found out about it honestly yeah. so it's uh, no, but now you know the word is that they might be well they're supposed to be releasing an, an app that you can install on the players so it doesn't make them obsolete i mean they still they still won't be obsolete you can still play using the explorer you just won't get the fancy you know uh wall art and stuff like that or you won't be able to add new titles but i guess they were talking about somebody in the know was talking about they might have a subscription app so it'll still you know you can still import your movies it'll scrape the titles and stuff like that for a fee per month which i think is still kind of a bad idea they should just have like every other media player out there where it's just like it's free to to scrape movie titles and all that stuff like that like dune does it zidu does it you don't have to pay a subscription free fee for that app it's built into the player and it just you know you add your titles and it, it downloads the movie information for you um I think them having this whole cloud structure of being able to down your, download your movies and backing up to the cloud so it, you know, you can add more devices on your network. Like, cool. But then right now you're they're stuck in this situation where it's like, we're, we're going to have to go out of business. So we have to cancel this, this special cloud thing that we had. So now it's like the app that was specially designed for this hardware is not going to work and it's going to make it a little bit harder to watch your movies on the device that you spent three thousand dollars for but now we're going to come up with some rudimentary app where you're going to have to subscribe to just just give the people uh just a working app like all the other media players out there for all your pirated content because that's what these devices are for let's not let's not <laughs> pretend that's not what these devices are for um just come up with an app charge 30 bucks or whatever one time fee nobody wants to pay 30 dollars per month on it yeah which which really sucks because the hardware is fantastic it's just their their software was just behind they were using android 4.0 we're on android 13 right now you're 10 versions behind so i mean come up with an optimized version even just give us an upgraded version of android Give us an optimized version of the app. If you guys want to get out of the game, just give us a working app. You can send it off to another app developer or whatever who can keep it going for the time being. But, you know, they're, they're trying to play this other game as is having an app for subscription fees again, like their Adobe or something. It's, it's stupid, and I think it's a horrible idea. So I don't, I don't know where their mind is right now whereas like listen we're we're gonna be at the hardware game i guess but maybe we'll be in the software game so who knows what it's gonna hold in the future i guess we'll find out in december yeah but you know i feel bad for everybody i feel bad because like i reviewed it i think they came out in 2015 i think i got in 2016 or so and after i I reviewed i don't want to say i was the one that did it but after i reviewed it other people got it and other influencers got it and it just kind of just blew up Whereas, like, uh, manufacturers like Dune, who's been around before Zipidi, and then you got Zidu, I want to say maybe at the same time as Zipidi. Zipidi kind of just blew up as being more of like a high-end home theater media player. And then they, um, what the fuck is that? And then um, they just came out with that NAS, and it was just like game over from there. I was like, man, that was like this doesn't sound right because I, I think they're running dvd fab in the background and uh, you can't do that listen you're not supposed to rip your movies despite all these physical media guys are talking about it's my content it's my movies and i can rip whatever i want to rip yeah if you rip mm -hmm. the encryption that's what will get you yeah that that's that's kind of an illegal thing you're not supposed to do that and i think um, it'd be like what you're saying i mean like if they could somehow back end an app to 
you know, automatically tie in metadata from IMDB yeah. or I think it'd be cool to do like letterboxed. It's kind of like a social media platform to share people like what movie you're watching or what you have been watched or what you have watched or add some type of social network to it. Like then maybe people will pay for the app, but yeah, I yeah. think the yearly app thing, like the yearly, the, the monthly subscription things way overdone yeah. in my opinion with every single thing. So if you're going to no longer, if you're going to have a product in ex, in extinction, yep. yeah, maybe charge a one-time app to keep the thing somewhat relevant for a while. Um, but yeah, that, I mean that that just looks bad because you, like your company is going under, and then you want to charge us a monthly fee. Yeah, that's 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 like bad form. Zipidi, Raphael, you know you know guys are doing the wrong thing like don't do that uh, travis sylvania do you don't ship nationwide so we do ship nationwide tvs are an asterisk at this point tvs are almost impossible to ship a block away without getting damaged much less states away so um everything else yes tvs we don't do a whole lot of just because they're so finicky like currently what we do guys is our local distributor will open it up at the gate at the warehouse and inspect it and then you sign for it or the installer does drives it over to the customer's home pops it open again <laughs> plugs it in and make sure it's not broke and then we get it up on the wall but 90 percent of the time it gets broke between the distributor's warehouse and the home and most models, again, TVs are becoming so affordable, don't hardly have any margin in them. So if we break just one, we might have to sell 15 TVs to make up for it. Yeah. So it's hard. But um, we're going to talk with Hisense because we do anticipate this will be a really popular model and see what our options are. But we'll yeah. at least distribute it in the Tola territory, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas area. Texas for sure. I do have to run, fellas. I'm very sorry. Yeah. I have uh oh looky there. What is that, dude? Throw up the peace sign, you get balloons, baby. Um <laughs> now I've got some family in town, so I do have to run, but appreciate you having me on. Oh, we already passed five. Yeah, actually Shane, I gotta yep. get off as well. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, right, I told my wife, uh, she's out. I told her I'd get my son from daycare, so I don't want to leave him the last one at school. <laughs> no, no problem, Zach. All right, guys. So, uh, listen, you guys want to shop for anything, TVs or um, processors, Macintosh stuff, remote controls, you know, definitely go to Dream Media. You know, they're a, a channel partner. So, uh, you know, support the channel, support Dream Media. They're good folks. Um dreammedia.com or shop dreammedia.com av.com appreciate you shane uh, yeah, thanks man. for everybody's support we we really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart it's it's amazing uh this youtube community that we have um so thank you to all of our customers for supporting us and uh shane thanks for having me on the channel yes thanks zach we'll catch you in the next one man all right see ya bye